And in my opinion, the new Kagurabachi chapter was fun. I've been waiting for this week because I really wanted to see what this new Hishaku member was all about. We actually get full confirmation that this Hishaku member was not one of the three that was present for Chihiro's dad's death. So that's something. This is either a newer member or one that kind of sat in the background. And of course, as the Hishaku does, they've always got hundreds of people surrounding them. I don't know where, trust me, I've, I've said it, I think, in almost every chapter of you so far. I don't know where they get all these people from. I genuinely do not know where they get all these people from. Uh, a couple of things that we do get confirmed this chapter, besides the fact that Iruha is a certified badass, this man literally sees his friends dead. And the Hashaku member that killed them goes, oh, you know, they're pretty tough, uh, but... <laughs> We brought him here to uh, piss you off so we could kill you, Aruha. The th cool thing that I do actually like here is that this sets the standard for Aruha to be correct in his previous calculations. When Chihiro and Hakuri really thought they were going to be outnumbered in a lot of different situations, these people that died were able to fight the Hashaku. They were able to fight the Datenseki enhanced troops. They did a significant job. And not for nothing, Iruha is a stone-cold badass who, even though his friends are dead, he has remained completely emotionless, takes out the Hishaku members that are going after him, and says, we've got a job to do. Do not falter. It shows the difference between someone that's been through the Seite War or someone that's been through hardship and probably have seen millions of comrades die at this point. And I even love further into this that we'll see is that despite his friends that he puts so much faith in dying and proving him wrong he's still willing to put trust in people again which is one of the most beautiful things and i gotta give iruha his due here iruha is turning out to be a really great character and it's just what your hero needs to jump right back into action and start Mopping the floor with nameless NPCs, as Chihiro does. He's right back to his usual habits. <laughs> Another interesting thing is the sorcery of the Hashaku member. That apparently, they use blood and origami in a very interesting combination. Aruha makes note here, so it's possible he's either seen this sorcery before, or he's just genuinely surprised that someone would use sorcery of this magnitude. Because at first, when this came out, I was like, oh, pfft. What is the deal with this, you know? But what they do is they actually go through the bodies of the random Hashaku members and then spit that blood out at Chihiro. So whether they turn into blood originally or they change into blood or they're just completely covered in blood as they go through, the name of the, of the technique is Blood Crane. So I think that the paper may either have, you know, properties of merging with whatever liquid goes on it, or it might be blood specific, but it completely blinds Chihiro and opens him up to attack. And as per usual, we kind of could have already guessed, the only real problem here is Hirohiko, the new Hashaku member. Because they're able to, amongst all of the chaos, just start playing with Chihiro and even start aiming attacks at Iruha without Chihiro even noticing. Hirohiko is definitely having fun in the situation while everyone else is stressed out. Whether you want to say how strong the, the origami magic is or not, even Chihiro eventually realizes later that they're not a member of the Hoshaku for nothing. Another thing that's really lovely to see is the relationship between Chihiro and Hakuri and how far it's come even though they've only known each other for such a short while if you really think about it they only knew each other for a couple days maybe a day or so before the rakuzachi and this isn't even that far past the rakuzachi because akori hasn't even fully recovered his spatial manipulation ability the fact that these people are able to bond and connect to the point that Shihiro was able to make a connection to the centipede attack that his father used back in the rakuzachi way before something that I didn't even catch up on. Like, it shows that these two characters, despite only knowing each other for so long, really were meant to be on this path together. They really have this, this connection that is almost seems determined by fate. Very similar to that kind of dedication Iruha feels for Chihiro's dad, Rokuhira. The fact that Iruha, once looking into Chihiro's eyes, 
immediately was like, you're his son and you're the spitting image of him. You carry the same vibe. I am dedicated to you as I was to him and I'm happy to serve you. Hakori, if we think all the way back, despite he likes to rewrite history and act like not a Chihiro simp, was just as dedicated to his Chihiro off of the fact that he saved him from that May blast way back when, when he was fighting Sojo. And Hikori just followed Chihiro around regardless. Chihiro only kept him around because he was the Sazanami, conveniently enough. But again, Hikori and Chihiro are almost linked in this undoubtable bond. And I wonder if Rokuhira, besides Aruha, had any other members of the Enchanted Blades or anyone else that worked alongside him that was like that. Maybe Shiba is that person. I will say, definitely miss Shiba. Uh, we feel his absence when he's not here. That's for damn sure. But this is where we get Iruha's big character moment. And this is the part that I really enjoyed, which was, again, despite his friends technically proving him wrong, he decides to still take this chance and trust Chihiro alone to take on this fight, which I absolutely love. Love. He thinks back to Rokuhira. He thinks back to his friends that are literally dead next to him. And he says, Chihiro, I trust you. Fight this. And it also says so much about Uruha that Uruha was one able to prove himself as a strong enough person to be left on his own. Because again, Hakuri, despite being the quote unquote bodyguard, has no magical power right now. He almost passed out when he tried to defend Uruha. So Arua has proven himself to be a warrior that doesn't need protecting from the nameless NPCs, or this could very much blow back on us entirely, right? Hakuri and Aruha's plan is simple, but it gives us so much leeway, and it does open us up to the deadlock discussion that we're gonna have to finish off the chapter, because what they're doing here is they're meeting up with actually another enchanted blade wielder, the guy who has cuts on his eyes and has the glasses, he's most likely blind. Their key strategy is if Hakuri and Aruha are able to finish the train ride and actually get to Senkutsuji, if once Hakuri's sorcery heals and he's ready to go, they're going to have two more enchanted blades on their side instantly. Not only will Aruha, who is already a badass, gain his enchanted blade back, be hyped up and ready to fight with the enchanted blade, this new enchanted blade wielder, who I imagine will hopefully be on our side and be with it, uh, who is probably also equally a badass, will also receive his enchanted blade back. And now the Hashaku won't have those two enchanted blades. So what goes into a really interesting moment, Hirohiko questions him and says, you sure about leaving Uruha on his own? You, you know, you think you could do that? And Chihiro thinks again to how they originally thought that the balance of power was against them. They only have Entin and Flamebone. And sure, they have Shiba, they have Azami and everything like that. But fighting someone like Hirohiko, Chihiro realizes that, you know what? Those Daten Seki crystals really aren't all that. They aren't as much of a threat as we thought. One, I mean, Jihiro was already able to take care of Tenri way back in the Rakuzachi arc. Maybe with Shiba's help, you could argue. But still, these sorcerers, despite dying to the Hishaku member, were able to fight the Daten Seki crystal users of the Hishaku back at the temple that Iruha was staying at. So even though the Hishaku finished them off, Iruha, at the end of the day, was right. These guardians held their ground. These guardians beat the Datenseki warriors. They were on their way to meet up with Iruha. They did their job. The Hishaku member was the anomaly there. Chihiro realizes that they also have their own anomalies. They have Shiba. They have Azami, as I mentioned before. And if they can, as we, as we spoke about, get those two enchanted blades in the hands of Iruha and the other enchanted blade wielder, we went from being outnumbered to equal in a deadlock of sorts to now, once we gain those enchanted blades, we'll be above the, we'll be above the grain. We'll be the ones with the advantage because we'll have four enchanted blades up against the Shaku that only have sure elite sorcerers that are above the level of dot and seki crystals so they should be able to fight enchanted blade wielders they can't even use those enchanted blades we will have that much more firepower against them and be able to take them back which is the one thing that invigorates chihiro here now the only negative aura i can give to hirohiko which actually i don't even know if it's negative aura i would even say it's just correct villain work right just just pure correct villain work instead of choosing to fight chihiro solo take on the entin like a prideful sorcerer hirohiko says you know what i love that you're able to go out and yora is interested in you so which is we find out yora is the quote-unquote leader of the shaku who i still 
I'm not sure if he's the real leader or just the face. I feel like there's a shadow leader, but again, maybe I'm thinking too far into it. Hirohiko acknowledges Yura, and Chihiro even says that, you know, it's too bad it's not the two of us, and this is what I'm talking about. Suddenly, all of these Datenseki crystal users show up right next to Hirohiko because they're not fighting fair one bit, and this is kind of what they also talked about as well, is as long as they have these disposable sorcerers, as long as they have all of these random people that keep applying for their Indeed ads, they will never fight fair. They will never take this seriously and fight honorably. Hirohiko proves that to Chihiro today. And Hirohiko even admits that they don't care if Yura's interested in them. They're gonna kill Chihiro right now, even if Chihiro wasn't their goal. Remember, they said this last chapter, right? Hirohiko was like, yeah, Enten's not even our goal. We can just avoid him and kill Uruha. Now, fuck it. You wanna, you wanna solo? You wanna go all out and fight us? Let's do this. Chihiro, the badass that he is, every week he hits his weekly quota of badass moments. He squares up, thinking about his father's death, how much he has against the Hishaku, and that resolves him to fight hard. While I wish we would have seen more of Hirohiko and Chihiro fight one-on-one -on -one this chapter, I think next chapter is going to be the big moment where they actually go at it. This chapter was honestly a great continuous setup from last chapter. The buildup of the stakes is big. Again, Aruha's character, him holding frame and not disparaging his friend's death as a Jujutsu sorcerer would or something like that, you know what I mean? Like, holding frame as a strong warrior would and fighting, not only just for himself, but telling Chihiro to continue fighting and not worry about him. These characters, even though they might be all alone, even though they all have different roles to play, if they're able to pull this off, the deadlock that they've been in for three to four years now, after Rokuhira's death is gone. It's over. And you know what? I'm excited to see if they can do it, even though I know the Hashaku probably are already thinking of ways to go around that bullshit. But I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say, or I'm interested to see if any, any of you guys kind of have an idea of how this arc is going to go. Do you think Akori and Aruha are going to actually make it to the next Enchanted Blade Wielder? I'm honestly worried that the other Enchanted Blade Wielders are already being attacked. There's no way the Hashaku one, have all of this manpower, and we're gonna go and assassinate the sword bearers one by one. I have a feeling that we're gonna find out the other temples are also going to be under attack as well. And if they're not already, we may, we, we may reach the temple and we'll be like, yeah, we made it. And then, oh, shit, everyone's dead. The enchanted blade wielder is already dead. And then there's a, a, shock, a, a Hashaku member wielding an enchanted blade already. That would be gnarly.